please make sure your mute your mic is muted. Um, I just wanted to go over a few uh, quick announcements. Um, again, thank you all for being here for this advisor forum on our Bachelor of General Studies program. Uh, I know that Katie and Kimmy from the Academic Advising and Transfer Center uh, have really enjoyed the opportunity to work along the faculty members who are going to be presenting information as well today. So thank you to uh, the faculty members involved and to uh, Katie and Kimmy for uh, helping to organize this advisor forum session. Um, as always, which I see many of you are already doing, please enter your name uh, and your department in the chat feature if you wish to receive master advisor credit for this particular advisor form. Uh, the advisor form today is being recorded and it will be posted on our Mo State Advising YouTube channel uh, within the next few days. So if you have colleagues uh, who you think could benefit from this advisor form, um, and the information shared in this form, uh, please let them know that they can visit the Mo State Advising YouTube channel and, and watch it and receive master advisor credit by entering a custom submission form, which is on our website. If there's any problems with that form or accessing that form, you can also just email me directly and I would be happy to make sure you receive credit for, uh, for watching the advisor form. Um, before we get started with the BGS advisor form, I do want to uh, make sure everyone knows that our next advisor form is scheduled on Monday, March 1st. Again, it will be offered via Zoom at noon. Um, I am really excited about this advisor form uh, because we are actually having our community college partners present information to us on um, transfer student advising, what we need to know at a receiving institution, how to best serve those uh, transfer students from uh, our community colleges across the state. Uh, the community colleges represented will be Missouri State West Plains, OTC, Crowder, Metropolitan Community College in Kansas City, and St. Louis Community College. So again, that advisor form will be on Monday, March 1st. Um, I think that is all the announcements that I have. Again, I am so happy to see uh, so many participants here today. Thank you so much for continuing to support our advisor form series via Zoom. Uh, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Katie and um, Kimmy. Oh, and I did, Laura, thank you. Laura just messaged me. I did have one more announcement that I wanted to mention. Uh, during our advisor, uh, the Academic Advising and Transfer Center, our town hall meeting that we had on Tuesday, February 2nd. We did have a glitch with our chat feature when we went to save that chat feature. So if you log into the system and you notice that you did not receive credit for that particular session, uh, please make sure you email Laura at uadvise at missouristate.edu. And that is the letter U advise, A-D-V-I-S-E, at missouristate.edu, because we do want to make sure that we give everyone credit uh, who was in attendance. We think we got everyone, but in the event that we did leave someone out, again, it was unintentional and it was just a glitch in our chat feature. So um, please check to make sure you received credit. Uh, so with that being said, I will turn yeah. it over to Kimmy no and no Kate. Problem, man. If you have any questions. All right, thank you so much, Ross. And thank you all so much for joining us today. I know that this has been a wild week. Your calendars, I'm sure, are full. I am sure your email inboxes are full. So you taking the time to join us today means a lot. We hope that it's super beneficial information for you and we're looking forward to sharing with you. This is not our first advisor form on the general studies degree. I think we've done one or two before, but each time has a little bit of a different spin and each time we get to include new information. Um, today we are going to talk a little bit about the structure of the degree and what it looks like, but we're excited to share with you information about our students over the past five years and what, um, what this has looked like. Especially exciting is we have our committee here today with us. Um, we have a faculty committee um, and you'll get to meet them today and hear from them, which is super exciting. They are a huge part of it and they are a wonderful group of people to work with. So today's agenda, we're going to do some introductions so you get to know who we are as a team working with these students and with this degree program. 
Again, we'll talk about that program itself, what the structure looks like and what our requirements are. We're also going to especially focus today on the fit. What makes a student a good candidate for the Bachelor of General Studies degree and what are some of the things that we look for? Um, on the counter side, what sometimes isn't the best idea um, and why is, might this not be the best solution for some students? We're gonna talk about those students and some of our statistics over the past five years. And then the success, we have some videos to share with you of our students who have successfully or are currently enrolled in this program. So to start things off, we'll start with introductions and our administrator for the program, uh, which is our Associate Provost for Student Success. Kelly, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there. This is Kelly Wood um, and she is the Associate Provost. She's our administrator for the program. And so she is who we go to for any sort of um, concern. She's our strongest advocate. Thanks. And our committee, if you all would like to introduce yourselves in order. Hi, I'm Kathy Van Landet, um, representing College of Business in ITC. I am Carissa Holscher from Communication. Hi, I'm Michelle Bowe from Biology. And good afternoon. I'm Brandon Egner from the College of Education, Department of Reading Foundations and Technology. I'm the rookie on the team. Thank you. And then there are three academic advisors for this program. Amy Marie Oftenbrink, our um, assistant director for undergraduate interdisciplinary programs, put a lot of work into this presentation with us, and she is extremely disappointed. She is stuck elsewhere. Um, she was scheduled to travel back on Tuesday, and obviously the weather had other plans for her, and she does not have reliable Wi-Fi, and so she is extremely sorry and very disappointed she doesn't get to be here with us. I can tell you from experience, she will be the first person to talk about this program and share all of its excitements, so I'm sure she would feel comfortable with me saying if you have questions or ever want to reach out to her to learn more, absolutely do so. You're also welcome to reach out to us anytime. I'm Kimmy Walker. I'm an academic advisor for this program and work in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Dyer and I'm the transfer advisor in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center and see students transferring into Missouri State who would be a great fit for the program. So some of the things that we wanted to share with you all today is words from our students themselves. So um, one of the things that Amy Marie was able to do before the weather caught her was send some questions to previous students and current students in the program so that you all were able to hear from them why the program is beneficial and how it's helped them. So this is Corey and he was answering the question about if he would recommend BGS to other students. If someone had um been in the position like me or uh maybe just have been transferred from school to school to school and you know how you can lose credits uh doing that i would definitely point them towards uh the bachelor's degree in general studies uh to help them move on uh sometimes you can feel like you're in a you've hit a plateau in school you know and you kind of just like wow I, I can see the end i can see all those courses and they, they're not that many but i guess but you still got to put the time in to get those things done and you can't have any relapse in the classes that you're in now you know because you have to take those over so uh definitely i would i would definitely point someone towards the bachelor's degree in general studies um if if they had been in the position i was in or or something different if they were looking to move on with their career and maybe get a master's degree in somewhere else i would definitely do that if someone had so sorry everyone so there are a number of students who could benefit from participating in the bachelor of general studies programs some of the ones that we've identified are students who stop out leave missouri state and then decide to come back later on this could be a few years or many years um, students facing particular roadblocks um, whether that be finances or otherwise students seeking a diverse set of skills. We have students who come in with very specific things in mind, have tried one thing and are looking to maybe add a few other skill sets to their what they wanna do. 
And then students who realize they're extremely specific or very broad interests later in their educational career. So started out as one thing and realized that that one thing was just not gonna cut it for them. So the program itself um, is 45 credit hours. It must include at least nine hours of 400 level or higher courses in their specific areas, as well as at least nine credit hours of 300 level or higher courses in their specific areas. They have to have a C or better in all courses that count towards BGS areas. And we're gonna talk about those here in a second. Um, and have to have a public affairs capstone course. So we're not losing the capstone course with the BGS. That capstone course would just come from one of the two or three areas that students are looking to complete as part of their curriculum for the program. So there are two different options. Um, students can either have a BGS degree with three different disciplines or two different disciplines. The three different discipline option looks like this, 15 hours from each different discipline. Again, 45 hours is the grand total of all of it. And we've listed some of those requirements for the program off to the side. Just as a reminder, all BGS courses have to have a C grade or better in order to count towards the discipline areas and um, must have a certain number of upper division hours as well. This is what that two split looks like, 21 hours from one discipline and 24 hours from another. Um, may be able to give a deeper dive into those specific academic areas, but still the same 45 hours to department option, nine hours, 400 level, nine hours, 300 level and have to have that capstone course. But these are what the curriculum programs look like with inside the BGS program. To hear about how this program helps utilize those credits and what it means for our students, we have Maria here to tell us how this helped her utilize her past credits and experiences. I mean, I had my goals, my what I wanted to do, but because of the moving around, that was just so difficult to do. So I've accumulated all of these credit hours. I have all of this learning experience, but nothing at the end. I, I'm talking 120 credit hours, no degree. For me, it's like a godsend because I'm so excited now that I'm so much closer. And the Bachelor of General Studies is helping me get there. And then I can also take my military background, my kinesiology background, my management background, and I could take all those things and put it all into one and make that degree plan um, special for me. I mean, I have my goal. All right. So when we get to that point where a student sees that they are a good fit for this program and have all that credit that they want to utilize, what happens next? So we're going to share with you the application process that students go through. There are three main stages for this process. The first is meeting with an academic advisor. Students are required to meet with Amy Marie, Katie, or I to be able to declare. They cannot change or declare their major to Bachelor of General Studies without first meeting with us. Um, we do that to make sure it is the right fit, that there isn't something that could be easily fixed in their current department, making sure that it's not a barrier that we could help them remove and help them reach their goal. Um, also making sure they've established enough credit to be a good candidate for this, but really also looking into their goals of where are you hoping to go and is this going to help you get there the way you want it to. So we spend a lot of time really getting to know the students in this area and in this stage so that we can best serve them. Um, that might include using a little bit of our, uh, our undeclared <laughs> side of our office as well as helping them look at, well, what are all of your options and making sure we're helping them choose the best one. In that, once they decide, okay, general studies is the right route for me, we create a personalized curriculum for them. We use those two or three department split and we have um, some different tools that we use to really break down what credit do they have, what is still remaining and how can we get there. That's also an opportunity for us to make sure we're looking at, do they need online classes? Do they need, um, what pace are they going to go at? Part-time, full-time, and what's the likelihood of them finishing in their, in their preferred timeline? So we really map out what this is going to look like. And then we change their major to um, general studies pre-admit. 
So students do kind of have that pre-admit limbo time where we mark them as one of our students, but there's still steps they need to do. If they don't do those, they are gonna get the DG or DX hold um, before they can register for classes, they'll have to take those steps. Those next steps are the application materials. That's the curriculum plan being approved. So something that we work on with them, our committee reviews each of these curriculums to make sure that they are reasonable, but they're also academically beneficial. We want this to be a program where they are truly learning and taking meaningful courses. And so those curriculum plans are reviewed by the committee. We require each student to meet with our career center. Um, those appointments look different for every student. Every student can be in a different stage. Sometimes it's, I know exactly what my goal is and I need to get there. How can I best market myself? How can I prepare for this interview coming up? How can I write my cover letter or resume to highlight my academic experiences? Um, or it could be, I have no idea what's next. <laughs> what jobs are open to me. Maybe it's a job search setting or even um, doing some of their strength assessments and career assessments to figure out where can I go next. Um, so that appointment looks different for each student. Our career center is amazing at helping these students with whatever stage they're in. Then they also write a letter to our committee. Um, as advisors collect those letters and bring them in a batch to the committee, but that's a chance for them to really tell us who they are, what it has been their educational history, and where what are their goals? What does this degree mean to them? I think that's probably one of our favorite parts. I, I would guess that other people feel similarly. Reading those letters is really cool. Some students are very, very strict, business, strategic, here's what I need to do. Some are, here is my life life happened, please help. Um, so we really get to see our students' personality, which is really fun. Those materials go before our committee. Our committee is are made up of faculty members appointed by CGIP. We meet monthly and review applications monthly. So students do have that rolling deadline. They can turn things in by the first of the month throughout the entire year. We review those applications and then the advisors bring that decision to the students and tell them whether they were accepted or not. We build their degree audits and kind of do all of that processing and officially admit them to the degree. That also gives our faculty an opportunity to give any sort of concerns. If there is any sort of, this kind of seems odd or we're really concerned about this. It gives us a chance to really address that in advising and dive deeper into those relationships with students to figure out how can we address this issue while supporting them? Or is it simply that, okay, this really isn't gonna be a good fit, but here's something else at Missouri State that is. And then to tell you a little bit more about what they're looking for, Carissa, one of our committee members is gonna tell you about that process. Thanks, Kimmy. Yeah, I would um, certainly echo a lot of what Kimmy said about the process of reviewing these DGS applicants. Um, it's probably not very often that you hear faculty members saying we're looking forward to attending a committee meeting because this is actually some fun service. Uh, but I think I speak for all of the committee members that we actually do really enjoy this. Um, some of these some of these letters make us cry, make us laugh, um, instill all kinds of emotions in us. So we really have a good time um, getting to know these students. And we also we take our responsibility fairly seriously. Um, I had a lot of misconceptions about the BGS before I was um, appointed to this committee, and I was really um, pleasantly surprised to learn about the, the rigor that this process requires. And so we thought it was important to share with all of you a little, a little bit about what we, what we look for when we're reviewing applicants in terms of both their letter and um, their curriculum plan that they've uh, made with, it, with advisors. And so we are obviously, of course, looking for a clear vision. Um, we don't want the BGS to be like a last resort or um, the, the, the easy way out, so to speak. We want to see that the student has a vision for how and why this two or three department split um, gets them to where they want to go, which of course also requires this intentionality. Um, we want to see that there is a, a purpose behind combining these two or three departments in their coursework um, and that there is a logical um, connection. Sometimes uh, it, it requires some cognitive leaps to make those logical connections. Um, and we want to see that, that the work has been done in the letter. Uh, and so we really ask for students to demonstrate these connections. How is this coursework 
um, across these two or three departments, really preparing you for your career goals or for your future education. Um, and I will say we do certainly require strong communication skills. I'm not just saying that as the communication faculty member on the committee, uh, but we, we very regularly comment on poor communication skills and ask for um, students to work on that and come back to us with a new, um, more professionally uh, poised and presented letter. Um, and then, of course, we, we want to see that proactive dis disposition. We want to see that the, the student has really put in the energy and effort to explore all of their options, um, to make sure that this plan is truly a good, solid plan. And again, not just like, like we said, the easy way out. Um, this could include things like uh, if, they, if they tell us in their letter that their goal is graduate school, um, we want to make sure that they've done their due diligence to, to ensure that the, the coursework they're collecting for their BGS actually leads them to that graduate path well, or um, will qualify them for uh, any certain careers that they're going after. And so we want, to, we want to make sure that it's all coming together in that letter. And uh, that's the best part of the job for us is when it does come together and we get to see these students move on to graduation. Thanks. And not a minute too soon. I lit these candles when we started our meeting to celebrate our fifth birthday of the program. And I wish I could give you each a cupcake in lieu of, um, maybe we'll collect the, uh, be able to see who, who all's attending and, and send you all a, a thank you for being part of it. But it is the fifth birthday for the VGS. These will go to my husband. And uh, we're, we're happy to be able to celebrate that milestone. The next slide shows how many are currently in the program. We have admitted 98 and 53 have gone through that first stage of visiting with one of the advisors, Kimmy Marie, Kimmy or Katie, and declared their intention and are just moving in, into the next, next part of, of getting their, their work done so that the committee can officially advise them that they have been admitted. Okay, so um, so we have we've had 618 total people. Um, sometimes it seems like more than that. <laughs> I've been doing I've been on the committee since it began, so um, I think well pretty pretty soon since after it began. Um, so a little over 37 percent are first generation students, and um, I guess we don't know about 21 percent of students. Um, about 12% are outside of Missouri or from outside of Missouri. 6.5% um, of first time transfer students. We have the university as a whole has a lot of transfer students. So, um, but those are the first time ones. And then um, about 14.5% are um, readmitted degree seeking students. And I think these are the ones that um, kind of maybe get us the most because um, they've left and now they're coming back. So, and then about 54% um, about have identified as female and 46% as male. Um, and then just kind of a summary of um, <laughs> the race and ethnicity um, stats. Um, so about 76% uh, are white or Caucasian, I guess 1.3 unknown, 1.5% um, international, um, more than one race, 4.7%. Um, Hispanic or Latino, 3.7%, Black or African-American, um, almost 11%, and a little less than 1% Asian, and um, about 0.6% First Nations or Alaskan Native. <laughs> so it's a pretty diverse group. I mean, I think it's probably, I'm just guessing, but I think that's more diverse than the university as a whole, but I'm, yeah. Is, is that me, still me, or is that? Nope, no. that's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so with our wide range of diverse candidates within the BGS program, we have seen uh, a growth in the program over the past five years. Um, and I say we being the royal we, uh, the, the team that has uh, been here and leading the BGS to great things um, for many years before I joined the team. Uh, really strengthening the program. And of course, this uh, ties a lot to the communication and working across the university with 
advisors and teams and uh, everyone present in this meeting to share the, the benefits of the BGS program. So we've seen an increase in uh, BGS graduates uh, across uh, the years. Um, so far this, uh, this year, this past semester, fall 2020, we saw another 41 graduates uh, increasing our numbers still. Uh, a lot more in the pipeline, of course, with the numbers that you saw on a previous screen. Um, with these graduates, we have uh, an average age with our graduates of 32. And really we have some stellar students. Uh, we have an average GPA of 2.9 uh, cumulative, um, 2.96 overall. Um, and as you can see on the screen with the whole history of our graduates, we have some outstanding ones. The 27 who graduated with university honors and the five within the honors college. Um, we, as we said, we have a great range of students and the BGS seems to be a great fit for a wide uh, variety of our, our, our bears, um, both young and old. Um, one of my favorite facts was uh, we had a student who first attended at MSU um, back in the day in the 1960s, left in the Vietnam War and wanted to finish uh, the degree. So came back and the BGS was a perfect fit to um, add that individual to our list of graduates. So again, a great diverse uh, group of students, uh, wonderful and terrific uh, list of candidates and graduates and future graduates. Okay, and to continue showing you some of those amazing students, um, they're absolutely right. I know we can't say it enough, but we love these students. We do really get to see a wide variety of students and get to hear a lot of life stories. Um, and so we want to make sure that this program remains something that accommodates all types of different goals. Some of our students do prefer to go on to a master's degree. Maybe it's their plans have changed and now they need to pivot into that master's program or it's something that um, is just now accessible to them. So our student Corey is here to tell you about how prepared he felt doing a general studies degree as he went to into his master's program that he's currently enrolled in. Uh, undergraduate studies, yes. They pushed me, uh, the professors pushed me, and I pushed myself. And it they really have prepared me for this master's. And I feel no stress. I feel no, I don't feel that I can't attain anything uh, in this master's program. I can do it whatever they ask me to, whatever the professors ask me to do. I know that I can do it because I've been prepared well by uh, my professors in the undergraduate programs. Uh, undergraduate studies, and then we also have um, our student here to tell us about how she feels prepared. Um, she is still currently enrolled in our program, but is interested in education. So here's her story about how she's feeling prepared. I actually did talk to um, an administrator uh, with the school district here, um, the athletic director. And I kind of asked, you know, what does it look like um, having, you know, as an inspiring teacher, but I'm not there yet, but I, I'm working in the, you know, BGS, you know, how would that look like to, to the district? And they were just very open with it and are very understanding um, because they they want, we need teachers. And so like with the BGS, that shows that you are legitimate in education. <laughs> and so, you know, we can accept that being that you are also working on your certifications, you know, so I think that's a very beneficial um, in that sense. I have also talked to the College of Education advisor at MSU, and she did a really fantastic job, Julie. Um, so she helped me out and kind of, you know, allowing me to see what options I have. Um, and how the BGS can work in conjunction with the Master of Arts in teaching. Yeah. Actually, this like Maria, we do have a lot of students who later on realize that they are interested in education, but an education BSED degree is not quite what fits in their life for one reason or another. So this is a way for, they are not certified through our degree at all, but it does open the door to other routes to certification. And we're very thankful for all of our contacts in the College of Education who help us navigate that. Um, since again, it's not our area. 
Um, I know that those were some, some good facts and some information. We would love a chance to hear what questions you all have about this program. And because uh, I know it can be sometimes a little bit mysterious, we'd love to take some time now to answer any questions you have. And you are welcome to either ask them in the chat or unmute yourself for those. Um, and we can have that discussion. As you all maybe think about some questions, some things to know about the program. Um, it, it is not inherently an online program. Um, we don't have just a straight online option for students to choose, but a lot of our students can complete their degree online because of the programs they choose. Um, it truly depends on which departments they have. Um, if it's something like kinesiology where your departments, you need to be in person for those classes. We're not gonna be able to help a student complete that online, but if it's something where they have psychology education and English, we can make that work. Um, so it, it's not inherently an online degree, but we definitely have plenty of students who do complete it with online coursework. Something else to note is that if you have students interested in the BGS program who need to meet a particular goal, this is not a BA or a BS or a BSED, one of those degrees. So sometimes when I'm visiting with transfer students who are coming in with many hours and they're going into something very specific where they need a Bachelor of Science, that's a conversation that we have um, in the beginning when we're talking to students about whether this is the best fit or not for them. So really visiting about what their goals are in the future. If you think that a student could be great for the BGS degree will be important and potentially helpful to us as we help that student discern as well. But that's something else to note when you're looking at students who could be great candidates for this program or what their goals are for the future moving forward. We have a great question about what um, job professions. Oh, Michelle, do you want to go ahead and answer that one? Oh, I was just going to say, ask if you wanted to say something about the pilot, uh, the program for pilots, because we do actually have a lot of students that come through our on a program that's like just for pilots. But we have a lot of people doing independent businesses. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. We get um, you know they've taken a lot of courses and stuff, and they're already in business, but they want to have you know a little bit more experience and a degree and everything. Um, and but they're already like business owners and everything. There's some pretty impressive people, but I'll let Kimmy address the um, pilot thing. Yes, so we have an articulation agreement with OTC for their aviation program. When students graduate the aviation associates at um, OTC, they are able to use those credits at Missouri State to fulfill one of their three or two departments. They do still have to do general education and reach all of Missouri State requirements. It's just because I believe it's an associate of arts and science, they wouldn't be able to use that credit at Missouri State at all, but we have an agreement where they can use it as um, general studies. In the general studies program, it allows them to come in with about 60 hours completed instead of 20. We do um, typically have Students need to have 75 hours completed before they join the Bachelor of General Studies. Um, that does give us an exception to that when students come from the aviation program. Um, it's really cool. It is super awesome to work with these students because they want to be pilots. To be a commercial pilot, you do have to have a bachelor's degree. That allows these students to truly choose something they're interested in. Some go very strategic and work on business because they want to have their own flight school. Some otherwise want to choose something that's just genuinely interesting to them. Uh, maybe it's geology or geography or history. It, it, there's a wide variety of what they choose. Some other jobs we see, we see a lot of students who are already in the workforce choosing to complete their degree and looking to move up. So we have students who work for the city of Springfield, some who work for Bass Pro and um, O'Reilly, we have, I have had a student in intellectual property, which was one of my favorite ones that stood out of, he just found himself in there and needed a degree to continue to move up in his current um, job. So we see them all over. For students who are just graduating and don't have an established field already, it is much like a liberal arts degree where um, there are these crucial skills that you get with any college degree and they're able to work with the career center to find what is gonna best suit them and what are some opportunities available. 
Um, I'm looking through my list. I know we have someone in logistics, but Michelle was absolutely right about, we see a lot of small business owners and it's really fun. Jimmy, you might mention the articulation agreements with law enforcement and, and fire fighters. Yes. And we get so many veterans as well. Yes, so we have a lot. Um, so we also have articulation agreements with OTC's fire science program. And we're, um, we also have a program with the city of Springfield Police Department for them to be able to use some of their credits as well. It is a great way of using military credit as well when they do have official military transcripts that is official college credit. It just doesn't fit any of the programs at Missouri State. So we've had students who use certain types of electrical engineering, certain types of, oh, I forget, um, information. I basically spy stuff. I don't know how to, I forget what the official title was, but it was super cool. Um, so when they're able to have all of that, that just comes in as general undergraduate electives, we get to still lump that together and help them utilize that coursework when it might not be, it wouldn't be able to fit any other program at Missouri State. That is a great point. Katie, we have a question about transfer students, if you would like to address it. It's, do transfer students need to be admitted to Missouri State before meeting with a BGS advisor and or to determine if the BGS is the best route for them? Oh, that's a great question. I'm glad you told me because I just cannot see it for some reason. So not, um, not necessarily to talk about the general logistics of the program, does a student need to be admitted? However, um, we are not able to see really any of their transcripts or how things have been evaluated and processed by admissions before those students have had their applications processed and their transcripts evaluated as well. So really to do anything super meaningful with their particular credits. They need to be admitted to Missouri State and have their transcripts sent and evaluated before we can really meet with them to discuss what the department areas potentially are as well as if they're a good fit for the program. Um, it's definitely a good um, way before they're admitted if they want to just talk about what BGS is. The Bachelor of General Studies degree here is not the same as the Bachelor of General Studies degree in other places. So sometimes our transfer students hear about Bachelor of General Studies degrees outside of Missouri State and come in potentially with some misconception about what we can do and what the degree is for them. So if they want to come in and generally talk about what the BGS is and how they can do it here at Missouri State, that can be done at any time. Um, that's a great opportunity to talk about you need to have some sort of plan, <laughs> some sort of goal. Our committee wants to see that, that you're dedicated and devoted, and we do too. Um, what areas are you interested in? What things do you want to pursue? How could this degree help you with that? How did you get here? Those are some of the general conversations that can happen before those things are processed and evaluated, but really to look at their specific things. They It is best for them to have been admitted to Missouri State, but that's a great question. Um, anybody who wants to just talk general, you're more than welcome to send them my way. Happy to visit about some of those things. While we're discussing um, transfer, I'll talk about a little bit of a totally different transfer, but transfer is still in the word of it, in the, in the title. Um, we do have a reverse transfer process um, option with our students who go to UMKC Pharmacy. So students who first attend Missouri State and leave before graduation to attend UMKC Pharmacy, um, our Springfield Satellite School mostly, they are able to do a reverse transfer. This is where they attend their first year of pharmacy school um, or two, depending on which program they choose, and they're able to take that credit and transfer it back to Missouri State to fulfill their degree. There's four options for this. It's chemistry, cell molecular biology, biology, and the Bachelor of General Studies. We do see a lot of students who end up with the Bachelor of General Studies because in their first three years at Missouri State working on those prerequisites, they typically focus on the prerequisites. If a student doesn't focus on completing the exact first three years of their major, they're likely not going to have the correct balance of credits to earn the type of degree they were looking for um, that they started with. So biology, cell molecular biology, or chemistry. We do have students who do that. They just need to know that plan really early on so they can schedule everything accordingly. 
if they didn't follow one of those exactly and don't quite have the credit to graduate with the major they started with, or if they never pursued a major to begin with, they just worked on their prerequisites, they are eligible for the Bachelor of General Studies degree. Um, for us, we'll use the first year of pharmacy school. Each program requires a little bit of a different um, timeline for each of those. But those students fill out a form on our website and all of them come to me. That's where I get to kind of use the explorator or undeclared side and the general studies side and see which degree is going to best suit them. If it's general studies, we'll start that process with them. It's a great opportunity for pharmacy students because they don't earn a bachelor's degree. They just get their doctorate in pharmacy. And a lot of times if they wanna switch fields, they can't check the box, I have earned a bachelor's degree. It's this weird limbo. So this is a fantastic way for them to have that security in case they ever want to change their career path. And then I also saw a question about um, Mission Diploma. Mission Diploma is, uh, is an event. It's a day each um, year or semester that Amy Murray coordinates. She has all the information about it. So you're welcome to reach out to her with further questions. But this is a day where we invite anyone from all over to come work with us to look at students who have stopped out for a certain amount of time and have a certain amount of credit hours. What we're looking for in that event is what how close are they to graduation? And is there something that we can just fix? Maybe they needed a minor and there is a minor that now exists that didn't when they were here and we can help them graduate with their original major with a new minor. Maybe it's they didn't meet a general education requirement, but that's something we can waive. They have this other thing here that we can easily substitute in that we would have done if they had just asked, but they didn't know to ask. So we're combing through people who have stopped out with a high amount of credit hours who deserve to get a degree and seeing if there's things that we can do administratively to do that. Or is there something where if they know they're one class away, are they more likely to return? Um, this is not an exclusive Bachelor of General Studies event. We are looking at every major. And so we need you, the experts in those majors, to help us do that. Um, if a student isn't close, but we see that they bounced around between a few different majors and accumulated a lot of credit, then we will look at Bachelor of General Studies to see if it's an option for them. Um, but our priority is just to help them graduate in any way possible. So that's something that we could use your help on. Um, yes, those who in, have helped with Mission Diploma in the past love it. It's a really fun time. In the past, we've had a little bell we ring each time we find someone who can graduate. Um, and so again, we need experts in these areas so that you all know what is acceptable and what's something that we can change or help them or have them ask for so that we can help them graduate. Um, that should be on our master advisor schedule. So please look at that. And again, reach out if you have any questions about it. We could definitely use your help. I believe we're also able to register for that right now through the same way you registered for this advisor forum as well. So if you're interested, and we hope you are, um, you're welcome to go ahead and register for that today if you'd like to. It'll also have the date and additional information. Yes, Ross put in the chat, lunch is provided. We give you incentives to help. <laughs> All right, those are the questions I see. If anyone wants to add more or unmute yourself, we'll be happy to do that. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. This is obviously something that all of us are very passionate about and really believe in. We hope that you get to see some of the benefits of it as well. And we sincerely encourage you to reach out anytime, if even if it's just, hey, can you look at this student's account? Would they be a good candidate? We are happy to look through their curriculum, through their transcripts and just take a look. Even if it ends up not being a good fit, it's still worth that time. So please reach out with any questions and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, again, thanks to the presenters today. I really enjoyed hearing from the students. I thought that was um, such a wonderful touch. So thank you so much for all your hard work and putting this presentation together. Uh, thank you participants for being here today, for choosing to spend your lunch hour uh, with, um, with others in the advising community. Uh, happy weekend. And again, hopefully I will see you again on Monday, March 1st for our next advisor forum. Bye.